ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد Firstly, before we begin, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, ask Allah Azza wa Jal that He rewards the community of Masjid al-Huda in the city of Sheffield for allowing us this opportunity to address directly our sisters in al-Islam and to mention to them some pieces of advice that we have prepared and gathered for them. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal that He rewards our sisters and He blesses their gathering and he allows these pieces of advice to be somewhat of benefit to them bi'ithnillahi ta'ana in relation to their practice of al-islami wa sunnah so the first advice that we begin with bi'ithnillahi ta'ala is the affair of al-ubudiyah of servitude and worship of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and that is that upon us all is that we recognize our position in this dunya and that is one of servitude and worship of Allah wa ta'ala that we are but slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he said tabaraka wa ta'ala in kullu man fi samawati wal ardi illa aati rahmani abada that there is none in the heavens and the earth except that he will come to ar rahman abada Except as a slave and a servant to him, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So we recognize our place and our affair in this dunya that is one of ubudiyah and servitude and worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said subhanahu wa ta'ala, Inna al Muslimina wal Muslimat, wal Mu'minina wal Mu'minat, wal Qanitina wal Qanitat. والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما أز يسد سبحانه وتعالى إن سورة الأحزاب إنديد مسلم من and the Muslim women, the believing men and the believing women, the obedient men and the obedient women, the truthful men and the truthful women, the patient men and the patient women, the humble men and the humble women, the charitable men and the charitable women, the fasting men and the fasting women, the men who guard their private parts and the women who do so, and the men who remember Allah Azza wa Jal often, and the women who do so, for them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared forgiveness. وَأَجْرًا عَظِيمًا And a great and tremendous reward. And in this ayah, ya akhwati fi Allah, that we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he has mentioned some tremendous characteristics. And he has mentioned that those who possess these characteristics, that for them is a great reward. And maghfirah, forgiveness. And these ten characteristics, ya akhwati fi Allah, that they are the sabab and the cause for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for this tremendous reward. And they are first, ya akhwati fi Allah, that one has to have al Islam. Inna al Muslimin wal Muslimat. Indeed, the Muslim men and the Muslim women. That they are upon Al Islam, the Deen of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. As he said Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, Inna Deen عند Allah Al Islam. That indeed the religion with Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is Al Islam. So the Muslim men and the Muslim women, and the believing men, and the believing women. The second one is that they possess Al Iman. That they have firm belief in Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. والقانتين والقانتات and the obedient men 
and the obedient women. So the third one is they have obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fourth one was sadiqeen was sadiqat. The truthful men and the truthful women. That they have sidq. That they are truthful. That they are truthful and sincere in their speech. As he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr. Radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. That he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked. Which of the people is best? Which of the people is best? So he replied sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said. كُلُّ مَخْمُومِ الْقَلْبِ صُدُوقُ الْلِسَانِ Everyone who is pure of heart and sincere in speech. So we find that the fourth characteristic that Allah Azza wa Jalla described them with is that they have a sidq, that they are truthful. And as he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud رضي الله تعالى عنه إِنَّ الصِّدْقَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْبِرِّ وَإِنَّ الْبِرَّ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ That truthfulness leads to al-bir. Truthfulness leads to righteousness. And righteousness leads to al-jannah. وَإِنَّ الرَّجُلْ لَا يَسْتُقُ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ سِدِّيقًا The man persists in speaking the truth till he is written with Allah Azza wa Jal as a truthful man. So truthfulness, ya akhwati fi Allah, that it leads to al-bir, it leads to righteousness. And righteousness leads to al-jannah. Then he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَالصَّابِرِينَ وَالصَّابِرَاتِ And the patient men, and the patient women. The fifth characteristic is a sabr is patience. That they are patient upon the obedience of Allah wa ta'ala. They are patient. In abstaining from that which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they are patient upon the aqdar of Allah azza wa jal, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wal khashi'ina wal khashi'at, and the humble men, and the humble women. The sixth characteristic is that they have al khushu' that they are humble, as he said, tabaraka wa ta'ala. إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ وَيَدْعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَهَبًا وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِعِينَ As he said, Jalla Jalaluhu, that they used to hasten to do good deeds, and they used to call upon us in hope and in fear, وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِعِينَ And they were to us humble and submissive. So the sixth affair is the affair of al-khushu' of being humble. وَالْمُتَصَدِّقِينَ وَالْمُتَصَدِّقَاتِ And the charitable men and the charitable women. The seventh affair is a sadaqah that they give in sadaqah. وَالصَّائِمِينَ وَالصَّائِمَاتِ And the eighth affair is that they fast. The fasting men and the fasting women. وَالْحَافِظِينَ فُرُّجَهُمْ وَالْحَافِظَاتِ and the men who guard their private parts, and the women who do so. So the ninth affair is that they guard their chastity. And the tenth affair, وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ And the men who remember Allah Azza wa Jal often, and the women who do so likewise. أَعَدَّ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً وَأَجْرًا عَظِيمًا that Allah Azza wa Jal has prepared for them forgiveness and a great reward. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal for His bounty. And from the ubudiyya ya ikhawati fillah, from that servitude and being an upright servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to persevere upon the salah, al-muhafadah, ala salawat, to persevere Upon the prayer, as he said, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, Hafidu ala salawati wa salati wasta, wa qumu lillahi qaniteen. Preserve the prayers and the middle prayer, and stand to Allah in obedience. And as he said, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, Ya Maryam qunuti di rabbiki, 
واسجدي واركعي مع الراكعين O Maryam, be obedient to your Lord and prostrate and bow with those who are bowing, instructing her with the affair of the salah. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إذا صلت المرأة خمسها وصامت شهرها وحصنت فرجها وأطاعت زوجها قيل لها أدخل الجنة من أي أبواب الجنة شئتي And he says صلى الله عليه وسلم that if the woman prays her five daily prayers and she fasts her month meaning the month of Ramadan and she guards her chastity and she is obedient to her husband then it will be said to her أدخل الجنة أنت إنتو الجنة من أي أبواب الجنة شئتي from any of the doors of Al-Jannah that you will. If she prays her prayer, her five daily prayers, and she fasts her month, and she guards her chastity, and she is obedient to her husband, then it is said to her, enter into Jannah, from any of the doors and gates of Al-Jannah that you wish. And this without doubt, my sisters in Al-Islam, is a tremendous virtue for the Muslim woman. That these should be her goals and her objective. That she tries her best to be in a position whereby it is said to her on that day, enter into Jannah from whichever of the gates and the doors of Al Jannah that you wish. And the first of those goals and those objectives and those priorities is the Salah. That she perseveres upon her prayers. That she is consistent with her prayers. That she prays in its correct time. That she observes the conditions of the prayer. That she stands before her Lord Tabaraka wa Ta'ala with khushu' and with humility, seeking this tremendous reward with Him Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And likewise, Akhawati Fillah, that from the advice is the affair of Qiyamul Layl, of praying in the night. And look what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu said. As we find in the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala an, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, May Allah azza wa jal have mercy upon a man who gets up at night and prays and wakes his wife and she prays. And if she refuses, then he sprinkles water in her face. And then he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rahim Allahim ra'atan, qamat min al layl, fasallat wa iqadat zawjaha, fasalla. فَإِنْ أَبَى رَشَّتْ فِي وَجْهِهِ الْمَا And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, May Allah Azza wa Jal have mercy upon the woman who gets up at night and prays, and she wakes up her husband and he prays, and if he refuses, then she sprinkles water in his face. And this is from that ta'awun ala birri wa taqwa, that cooperating with one another upon righteousness and piety, and this is from the best type of that ta'awun that occurs between the spouses, that they are encouraging to one another, that they entice each other to perform good, that they make a conscious effort with each other in order to be ibad of Allah wa ta'ala, in order to be servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they set that as the core foundation and the principle of the entire marriage. And that everything that they do within the confines of that marriage is in order to please Allah wa ta'ala, is in order to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and strengthen their worship of Him, encouraging each other and aiding and supporting each other in this affair. So He وسلم, made dua for the woman. May Allah Azza wa show mercy to her, the woman who gets up at night and prays. And she wakes her husband and he prays. And if he refuses, then she sprinkles water in his face. That this is how the Muslim woman should assert herself and do her best and build a relationship with her spouse wherein they recognize and they realize their position in this dunya. That they are servants of Allah wa ta'ala and they build strong foundations whereby they can worship Allah wa ta'ala together 
and encourage each other upon the obedience to Allah wa ta'ala, that they make their households, households that are upon Tawheed and Sunnah, households wherein the ibadah of Allah wa ta'ala is established. And the husband should be appreciative if they have a wife who encourages them to worship their Lord Tabarak wa Ta'ala and to be obedient to Allah Azza wa Jal as He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ad-dunya mata' wa khayru mata'i dunya al-mar'atu salihah That the dunya is mata' That the dunya is enjoyment And the best enjoyment of this dunya is al-mar'atu salihah Is the righteous woman And the second advice for our sisters in Al-Islam after the advice of Al-Ubudiyyah, of having servitude and being worshippers of Allah wa Ta'ala, is the affair of Talib al-ilm, of seeking knowledge, of actively seeking knowledge. And that is that our sisters, that they dedicate a portion of their time and their day in the affair of studying and learning their religion and educating themselves about the deen of Allah wa ta'ala, wherein they take time out from their day in order to listen attentively to a lesson and have a regular lesson that they listen to and they take notes and they benefit from. And in turn, they find that this has a ripple effect upon their households, that by them dedicating time to seeking ilm, that they make their household an environment whereby knowledge is obtained and is sought that they ensure that their households are households that are filled with barakah and are filled with tilawatul Qur'an, with recitation of the Qur'an and with talab al-ilm and with seeking ilm and that their children are observant to this and they encourage their children to seek ilm. They encourage their children to seek knowledge and not only do they encourage them to seek knowledge but they facilitate it for them. As we find with some of the greatest a'imma, the greatest imams of Islami was sunnah, such as Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah, and other than him, that we find that their mothers were instrumental, that their mothers played a huge role in aiding them in acquiring the knowledge that they acquired until they became imams of the deen. So the advice for our sisters is that they prioritize the seeking of knowledge. And they build a household upon acquiring of knowledge. And that they encourage the children and the family members to seek knowledge. And they facilitate it for them. And this no doubt is from the best tarbiyah and the best cultivation that our sisters can give to their children. That they encourage them to seek knowledge from its correct people. From the ulama of Al-Islam. From the scholars of Al-Islam. And as he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man salaka tariqan, yaltamisu fihi ilma, sahal Allahu lahu, bihi tariqan ila al-jannah. That whoever traverses upon a path in search of knowledge, then Allah Azza wa Jal will make easy for them a path that leads to jannah. And our third piece of advice for our sisters upon al-Islam wa sunnah is that they adhere to and they cling firm to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is that they adhere to the sunnah in their aqeedah, in their belief, in their manhaj, in their methodology, in their aqwal, in their statements, in their af'al, in their actions. And in all of their ahwal, in all of their affairs, in the way they dress, in the way they conduct themselves in relation to their akhlaq and their manners and their conduct, that they cling to the sunnah, that they are firm and ardent upon the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah wasallam, and they do their best to adhere to it and to implement it in their lives and in their households. And they are careful not to oppose it. And he said, Tabarak wa ta'ala, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَدَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَن يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا مُبِينًا As he said subhanahu wa ta'ala, There is not for the believing man, nor the believing woman, 
that when Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger of the Creator affair, that they have any choice in the matter. And whoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger, then they have strayed with a clear misguidance. So do your best to adhere to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So upon us and upon our sisters in Islam, is that they do their best to adhere and follow the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the fourth piece of advice for our sisters in Islam is that they keep good company and they surround themselves with good company and people who are firm upon the deen, people upon istiqama, people upon the sunnah and salafiyya, that they keep as their companions those who will encourage them and remind them of Allah wa ta'ala, those who are genuinely concerned for them and advise them when they fall short, that this is how the friendship should be, that they should have as their core foundation and fundamental, that they are built upon that love for Allah wa ta'ala, that they love each other for the sake of Allah, and for the adherence to the deen of Allah wa ta'ala, and to the sunnah of His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and that they remind each other, they encourage each other, and when one of them falls short, then the other one advises them and lifts them up and pulls them back up and comforts them and reassures them and reminds them of that which Allah Azza wa Jalla has said and that which the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that this is good company. And as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala instructed us in his book when he said, Ya ayu al-ladheena aamanu taqullaha wa koonu ma'a sadiqeen when he said to O oh, you who believe, fear Allah and be with the Sadiqeen and be with the truthful ones. Keep company with the truthful ones. And included in this piece of advice, Ya Khawati Fillah, is that our sisters try their best to maintain those friendships. That when they have built friendships and companionships, with the people of Sunnah and Salafiyyah, that they do their best to maintain them, and not to cut them off, and not to fall out with them, due to personal affairs, but rather they have patience with each other, they have hilm and forbearance with each other, they advise one another, and they remind each other of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, they pardon each other, they overlook each other's shortcomings, they make excuses for one another and they try to maintain those friendships. And they realize that the shaytan, that he is harris, that he is eager to cut us off from the people of khayr. That he is eager to take you away from your sisters that are upon sunnah and salafiyyah. And to cut ties and to break down those friendships and to test them. He is eager to take you away from the people of khayr. And the people who want good for you. And the people who will encourage you. And remind you. And advise you with the sunnah. The shaytan wants to isolate you. And wants to cut you off. From every single path. That will lead to khair. That will lead to good. And lead you. Into jannah. Bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. Wa bifadlihi wa karami. So maintain those ties of sisterhood and those friendships that are upon sunnah and salafiyyah and do not throw them away due to a dispute or a personal dispute as he said sallallahu alayhi as an encouragement to all of us وَأَنَا الزَّعِيمٌ بِبَيْتٍ فِي رَبَضِ الْجَنَّةِ لِمَنْ تَرَكَ الْجِدَالِ لِمَنْ تَرَكَ الْمِرَاءِ وَإِنْ كَانَ مُحِقَّهَ as he said sallallahu alayhi that I guarantee a house in the lower part of Jannah for the one who leaves off argumentation wa in kana muhiqqa even if he is in the right and even if he perceives himself to be correct and in the right that he leaves off the argumentation for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has guaranteed for him a house in the lower part of Al-Jannah so any argumentation that occurs between us, 
then we leave it off for the sake of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And the fifth piece of advice for our sisters is that they be cautious and they do not spend time and waste their time on social media platforms. They do not waste their time on social media. As we find the akhwati fillah, that many of the people that they have fallen into this trap are spending their time on social media and comparing their lifestyles and looking at those who have chosen to flaunt what little they have been given from this dunya, flaunting their wealth or their spouses or their children. And sadly we have some of the Muslims that they see this and they begin to compare their lifestyles and they become disappointed and unappreciative of that which Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed them with. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تَمُدَّنَّ عَيْنَيْكَ إِلَى مَا مَتَّعْنَا بِهِ أَزْوَاجًا مِنْهُمْ زَهْرَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا لِنَفْتِنَهُمْ فِيهِ وَرِزْقُ رَبِّكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَبَقَى As he said to Barak wa Ta'ala, and strain not your eyes in longing for the things we have given for enjoyment of various groups of them. زَهْرَةَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا The splendor of this life the splendor of this dunya, لِنَفْتِنَهُمْ fi, That we may test them thereby. وَرِزْقُ رَبِّكَ خَيْرُ وَأَبَقَى And the rizq and the provision of your Lord is better and more lasting. So do not strain your eye in longing for those things that the people flaunt by way of that which they possess in this dunya. And that which they are being trialed and tested with, there is a test for them. And lastly, we conclude bi idhnillahi ta'ala with this final piece of advice for our sisters. And that is as pertains to the affair of istiqamah and being upright in the deen of Allah wa ta'ala and having thabat and being firm upon the deen of Allah azza wa jal and upon the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And to hold on to our Muslim identity, particularly in the lands that we live in and the times that we live in, whereby the society seeks to corrupt and dismantle the identity of the Muslim woman and to strip her away from her identity and her Islam and her modesty and her hijab and her adherence to her religion. So upon us all is to remain firm upon the deen and to turn to Allah Azza wa Jal with sincerity and supplicate to Him and ask Him to keep us firm as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He used to supplicate وَكَانَ أَكْثَرُ دُعَائِهِ And the majority of His dua was يَا مُقَلِّبَ الْقُلُوبِ ثَبِّتْ قَلْبِ عَلَى دِينِكِ O turn of the hearts, keep my heart firm upon your deen. So we should not become complacent and feel safe. But rather we should ask Allah Azza wa Jal for thabat and for firmness upon the deen of Allah. Tabarak wa ta'ala. And we advise our sisters to cooperate with one another. To work together in order to achieve this thabat and this firmness. Wa ta'awanu ala al-birri wa taqwa. Wa la ta'awanu ala al-ithmi wa al-udwan. And cooperate with one another upon piety and righteousness. And do not cooperate with each other upon sin and transgression. وَقَالَ تَعَالَ وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبَلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And he said to Barak wa Ta'ala And hold firm to the rope of Allah, all of you together, and do not be divided. And we advise ourselves and our sisters to conduct ourselves and adorn ourselves with the lofty characteristics and the manners of Al-Islam. By way of haya and shyness and modesty and hilm and forbearance, wala afu and pardoning, wa rifqu and being gentle and merciful towards one another. As he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ma kana rifqu fi shayin illa zana. That gentleness is not found in anything except that it beautifies it. And it is not removed and taken from anything. 
except that that thing becomes repulsive. So upon us all is to turn to Allah Azza wa Jal in tawbah, in repentance, and making istighfar, and seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and making dua to Him. And with that bi idhnillahi ta'ala we conclude, and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal that He pardons our shortcomings and our mistakes, and that He subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to benefit from these small pieces of advice that we have gathered and collected, وَأَنْ يَجْعَلَنَا مِمَّنْ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقَوْلَ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ أَحْسَنَا وَنَكْتَفِي بِهَذَا وَصَلِّ اللَّهُمْ وَسَلِّمْ وَبَارِكْ عَلَى نَبِيَنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِ أَجْمَعِينَ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ